A pivotal paper that was published in Europe about a decade ago, stated, healthy living is the best revenge. Adhering to just four simple lifestyle factors can have a positive impact on the prevention of chronic diseases. There's nearly 80% less chronic disease risk, with diabetes risk slashed by 93%, heart attack risk dropped by 81%, cutting stoke risk in half, and cancer risk by 36%. The potential for preventing morbidity and mortality from diseases through healthy living is enormous. Each year half a million people develop heart disease and stoke while over a million suffer from diabetes and cancer. The message from this analysis is clear. Adopting a few healthy behaviors can have a huge impact on the risk of diseases. The four factors recommended were never smoking, never being obese, doing at least 30 minutes every day, and following a healthy dietary principle. Follow all four healthy lifestyle factors and achieve 80% reduced risk of major chronic diseases. But, what does that mean for mortality risk? For health behaviors combined predict a four-fold difference in total mortality in men and women, with an estimated impact equal to 14 years in chronological age, the individuals were dying at such reduced rate that it was as if they were 14 years younger. Finally, a regiment to extend human life expectancy. This commentary was in reference to this study, where similar analysis of the impact of healthy lifestyle factors on life expectancies was made, but this time it looked at the US population, which is of great importance, Americans possess a shorter life expectancy compared with residents of almost all other high-income countries. The researchers agreed that adopting a healthy lifestyle could significantly reduce premature mortality and promote life expectancy in adults in the US. But, by how much? Researchers estimate that adhering to a low-risk lifestyle could prolong life expectancy at age 50 years by 14 years in women and 12.2 years in men. If you're 50 right now, instead of living to only 79 if you're a woman and 75 and a half if you're a man, taking just basic care of yourself could propel you to an average life expectancy of 93 if you're a woman and 87 and a half if you're a man. But is it too late to turn back the clock? A midlife switch to a healthy lifestyle that include a diet of at least five fruits and vegetables daily, exercise, maintaining a healthy weight and not smoking, causes a reduction in mortality over the following few years. This means a 40% lower risk of dying in the following four years. Therefore, if we make the necessary changes to our lifestyle, it could be extremely worthwhile, and middle age is definitely not too late to act. Also, realizing the 12 to 14 years of added life study was based on data from health professionals, gets you excited about all the potential benefits. If health professionals starts getting healthier, they could become role models for healthful living and potentially save more lives than just their own. However, is this wishful thinking? Of course, practicing what you preach might just backfire. Actually, display of excellence can negatively affect the very people they are trying to inspire. You might assume that not playing the hypocrite and just trying to do the right thing would bring positive outcome and inspire confidence in others. So you want a dance instructor who can dance, a music teacher who can play, a health professional who is healthy. However, this scenario fails to take into account concerns about making others feel useless. For example, vegetarians are the targets of a significant amount of ridicule and hostility. It's because they may appear as morally superior, which cause people to feel they're being marginalized. There was an elegant demonstration of this phenomenon in this study where principal deviants who take the high road threaten others' moral self-worth. This is what they did. Research subjects were told to complete a racist task by an experimenter. Those moral rebels refusing to obey were cheered by observers but were disparaged by participants who had themselves gone through with it. For them the rebels' stance implied an indictment of their spinelessness. Therefore, when doctors present themselves as the picture of health, patients might think they're being holier than thou and unintentionally alienate people, potentially turning off the very patients who most need their help. 
You can see how someone with a weight issue might feel threatened and judged by a physician triathlete. But what can we do? We need healthy practitioners. Physicians who smoke are less likely to tell their patients to quit smoking. Physicians who are overweight are less likely to counsel their patients about weight. And physicians who doesn't work out are less likely to talk about exercise. What doctors can do to make patients comfortable is to emphasize that doctors' duty is to assist patients to achieve their own personal health goals. Studies reveal that when doctors do this, it increases the appeal of fitness-focused physicians to overweight patients. So, doctors can then display exemplary behavior while at the same time not inadvertently alienate the very people who could benefit most from their guidance.